Namaste everyone. In this video, I am going to talk of a very important topic. And we will understand this important topic with help of marriage, analysis of marriage. Generally, in my classes also, I take examples related to marriage because it is a very varied field. What I am going to talk about today is Navansh. The ninth divisional chart or D9. Before I go there, I should tell you of a classic dictum. This does not come from Hindu astrology. This comes from Jain astrology. That tells you that out of this Panchang, Tithi, Var, Nakshatri, Yoga, etc. Moon is 100 times more powerful than all of it. Basically meaning if Moon is good, this Tithi, Var, Nakshatri, Yoga, etc. will not have their bad result. Better said than enjoyed in practice, but still. Lagna is 1000 times more important than Moon. And Varga, divisions are 5 times more important than Ascendant. Now out of these Vargas, Navamsha or D9 is Varga Shiromani. Top in the divisional charts. So when you talk of divisional charts, there are many charts to consider. Out of these many charts, though some may argue that D60 has more importance, etc, etc, but technically Navamsha has more importance. What comes in practice and what is accepted all over the place. Because D60 does not get introduced before Dashvarga. So D60 is introduced only in Dashvarga scheme, whereas Navamsha is there in Shadvarga, Saptavarga, Dashvarga and Shodashvarga, all of them. Right. And, but going into this particular debate is not my topic for today. The purpose is how does Navansh work? There are a few important things related to Navansh that I will be talking about. Keeping in mind that nowadays, once again, the importance of Navansh is getting diminished and also in better understanding the things related to marriage, you should understand the Navansh. So first of all, Navansh, as with any divisional chart, see horoscope is time. Divisional charts are finer tuning of the time. It is like saying Sunday is holiday. But in that Sunday also, there are some parts where you are resting another type of holiday. Some parts where you are just spending leisure time with your family, another type of holiday. So going in depth into that quality of time is what happens with respect to divisional charts. Now, Navamsha is the horoscope, which is an amalgamation of Rashi and Nakshatra. So it becomes very, very important. So the first prime users of Navamsha is to check the reality of planet. This have to be understood this particular way. A planet is exalted. It seems to be good. But the planet will remain exalted for long. So to check the reality of exaltation, Navamsha is used. For this particular reason, the most important shloka is there that if a planet is exalted in Navamsha, exalted in Rashi chart but debilitated in Navamsha, it does not give the result of exaltation. This particular principle is there. So it highlights the importance of Navamsha. That the real strength or the reality of the planet is what is seen in Navamsha. And not that that is seen in the horoscope. Though this is not completely true, planet powerful in horoscope have their own importance and planets powerful in Navamsha have their own importance. But it is about the enjoyment. Rather it is about the result. How I will like to differentiate it now? You have seventh lord in a very good Rashi. Your spouse can be very good. This spouse is good in nature or as per the standards of society or whatever you say, right? Spouse, good as per the standards of society, good as per nature, behavior, whatever. Now this goodness of spouse, how it works with respect to your marriage. Good spouse guarantees you good marriage or what? This is what the Navamsha will tell you. Hence Navamsha is very important to be seen. Most important part is the planet should not be losing his power in Navansh. 
a planet which is exalted in d1 chart but does not remain exalted in navamsha chart that will be our gottam condition is not an actually exalted planet the real result of exaltation that you are expecting may not be there so this is the one of the most important thing that you have to understand to check the purity of planet according to me navamsha should be used right and the important point is talking of marriage we have talked about it in the divorce video that it is the navamsha of the 8th lord which decides whether the marriage will sustain or not so basically speaking your marital your wife can be very good but your marital life will be good or not it depends on the navamsha of 7th lord now here are two things primarily Seventh Lord in the Navamsha of a benefic planet. Seventh Lord in the Navamsha of a malefic planet. Now you see any divisional chart, not only Navamsha. Traditionally, the method of reference is not Aries Navamsha or Scorpio Navamsha, but Mars Navamsha. So basically, Navamsha belonging to Mars, Saturn, and Sun are malefic Navamshas. And when the seventh Lord goes into malefic Navamsha, the experience in relationship is generally better. Whereas when the seventh lord goes into benefic navamshas, the navamshas of Jupiter, Mercury, Moon, Venus. In that particular scenario, the experiences in relationship is good. Now I am only talking of experience, relationship, marriage, whatever you say. The real game player, the real game changer. The real game changer in the matter of the Navamsha of the seventh lord. See, I am not talking of Navamsha of the eighth lord. Eighth, eighth lord is about marriage, about longevity of marriage. I will come to that. Regarding the seventh lord, the basic factor is seventh lord in the Navamsha of friend, seventh lord in the Navamsha of enemy. So do that. Remember, sun, moon, Jupiter, Mars are friendly towards each other. Inimical towards the second group, that is of Saturn. Venus and Mer Mercury. This group is friendly towards each other but inimical to Sun group. So if the seventh lord is in friendly Navamsha, the marriage will ultimately be good. Seventh lord goes into inimical Navamsha, marriage is ultimately bad. Now there will be four setup. Mm -hmm. Seventh lord in good Navamsha but inimical Navamsha. Marriage experience can be good but it will not sustain. So spouse may go to someone else affair, etc. etc. Or marriage dying, marriage in marriage relationship dies, kind of stuff. Will come to pass. And as I would like to call it, Navamsha is very important, and the predictions that come through Navamsha is very definitive. To accurate prediction, 100 percent confident prediction, and all of this stuff, the only thing that you should know is how to use Navamsha. Other than that, nothing else is needed. And this is my experience. Now coming back to the point. Seventh Lord in good Navansh, friendly Navansh. Good marriage sustains also very good, be related. Seventh Lord in inimical Navansh, seventh Lord in malefic Navansh, but friendly Navansh. In this scenario, there can be two cases. The first few first experience, first few relationships are bad. Then person ultimately gets married to a spouse and remains happy with the spouse. If the seventh lord is going into multiplication factor that I have talked about in the previous video. If seventh lord is not going into multiplication factor and seventh lord is going into inimical Navamsha but friendly. In that scenario, experience in relationships before marriage will be bad, marital life will be good. Seventh lord in malefic Navamsha also, inimical Navamsha also in that particular scenario, all the relationships are very bad. Happiness of relationship is not there with native. Marital life is not good also. It is not sustaining as well. Here, because we are talking of the seventh lord, we are talking of the... See, eighth house, the Navamsha of the eighth lord, eighth lord of the D1 chart indicates divorce. Seventh lord primarily should indicate the quality of marriage. So, in another words, I will like to put... I will like to put it in the way of longevity of relationship. You know? The marriage is sustaining, no divorce is happening, but the relationship have died between the couple is what the seventh lord can do. 
सेवेंथ लॉर्ड गोइंग इन टू अमिकल नवामशा ऑल्सो बैड नवामशा ऑल्सो वॉट हैपन्स मैरिज में सस्टेन बट द कपल इज लाइक नॉट मोर इंटरेस्टेड इन इच अदर दे डोंट हैव एनी रिलेशनशिप दे आर जस्ट होल्डिंग ऑन टू रिलेशनशिप फॉर द सेक ऑफ चिल्ड्रन दीज थिंग्स आई दर टू डे और टू मोरो ब्रेक्स और इफ इट इज नॉट ब्रेकिंग देन इन दट सीनेरियो देर इज नो पॉइंट इन बींग इन टू सच मैरिज एटलीस्ट देर इज नो मैरिज इन टू इट और नो रिलेशनशिप इन टू इट बट वॉट एवर इट इज दैट इज टू बी अंडरस्टूड so this is primarily what it does secondarily <clears throat> the point of that navamsha is the chart of marriage is a complete misconception people who propagate such things people who follow such things have never read astrology properly and they should learn astrology properly right coming back to another point now navamsha is told as the fruit of karma seed of karma also it can be told so fruit of karma seed of karma both is navamsha lord so how it works with respect to marriage we will understand and this way you will also understand in other areas is what i think so you take the rashi of the seventh lord you say seventh lord is situated in scorpio this is horoscope of an aquarius ascendant native now navamsha chart the prime funda is what is told in classics is to take the navamsha rashi <clears throat> back to divan chart for aquarius ascendant native seventh lord sun is into scorpio navamsh take it back to divan chart take scorpio back to divan chart it will be the 10th house so after marriage there will be great success in relation there will be great success in professional life name fame status and cognition authority success etc will come to pass this is how the result should be read now i am telling you good result in this particular scenario only good result should be told because navamsha indicates blessing so whatever blessing should come from marriage this technique will indicate you if the marriage is not going to sustain in that particular scenario the blessing will be snatched later on but this blessing will come for sure that is guarantee in this particular scenario regarding other houses to you know the point is if you take the rashi of the seventh lord back to divan chart if it falls into 6th to 12th houses what will be the blessing so in the case of the 6th house success in competition or person getting that desired thing that he have been thinking for since long that he have been working hard since long getting fulfilled is the point seventh lord going back to the rashi which is in the eighth house generally indicates getting lottery and things as such along with this good health enjoyment in life winning into competition warfare battle or getting something which the person have been anticipating since long is a good result for 8th house the good result for 12th house will be mental peace solace enjoyment etc in life along with income of income of money great gains foreign settlement mental peace etc regarding all the other houses i think people know right so i am not elaborating over that this is the blessing of marriage what i am doing i am taking marking the rashi where the seventh lord is situated in d9 chart and bringing that rashi back to the d1 chart now in this particular scenario there will be a lord of rashi also for example in my case in my example that i have taken seventh lord goes to scorpio namas the lord of that rashi is mars so this blessings in marriage will only come where the spouse is having martial property this generally you will see in those horoscopes where there is more than one marriage so generally only one marriage is blessed others are not and this blessed marriage will be that one marriage where the spouse is having martian quality if it is a horoscope of only one marriage there is no multiple marriage indicated then there is no need to check this technique whether the nature of the spouse is meeting with the is matching the nature of mars or not there is no need to check it but if it is a multiple marriage case then you have to check it. now secondarily this is the fruit of karma right so what karma you have done bhai that leads you to this fruit why it is important to know this it is important to know so that 
you know why you are getting this blessing. So even if this blessing is not coming to you at a particular point of time, maybe they go in our example. Seventh Lord is going into Scorpio, so it is giving good profession, success in professional life, and all the positive significations of tenth house. But this will, this can be the case for a lifetime after marriage, or this can be temporary. Generally, this should be a result for lifetime. It can be temporary if the person overlooks the good karma that he have done and he starts doing karma opposite to that, bad karma related to the same. So the understanding of the same is very important. This understanding you get from the Navamsha of the Lord. In this example, seventh Lord is sun. Sun is situated in Scorpio Navamsha, the Lord of which is Mars. Now you check the Navamsha of Mars. Now say this Mars is situated in Aquarius. Now you check where is Aquarius in the D1 chart. This is, this is Aquarius Ascendant. So this is the Ascendant itself. So what karma does Ascendant indicates? Ascendant indicates the karma of treating everyone like yourself. Ascendant indicates the karma of treating everyone the way you. We have this saying, na, behave with everyone the same way you want people to behave with you. Because of this particular karma, because of samabhav. This is called samabhav. Because of this samabhav karma, having equal type of mentality for everyone, doing no partiality in life, one is enjoying this result. And by the time the, the person, the native will be impartial, he will enjoy the good result and by the time he will having partiality, he will start taking favors of people he like, the good result will go. In the same manner, the good for karma for the second house is serving family. The good karma for the third house is being devoted to guru or god. The karma related to fourth house is remaining connected to the birth land or a nearby temple to birth land connection to that. The karma related to fifth house is of mantra chanting, good karma of mantra chanting, spirituality. Karma of 6th house is service to needy. Karma of the 7th house is helping the people of opposite gender, generally helping weaker people because 7th house indicates wounded, wounded people. So helping weaker people. The karma of the 8th house is helping people in distress. The karma of the 9th house is visiting temple. The karma of the 10th house is donation. The karma of 11th house is guiding people unintentionally. Good karma, I am talking of. And the karma of 12th house is working together with people. Right? The karma of 12th house is working together with people. So these are the good karmas that you can find. And this is not with respect to the seventh lord, this is with respect to anything. Whatever good or bad result you are enjoying. You are enjoying because of this karma. If you are enjoying good result, all the very good, keep on doing this karma. You will enjoy the good result for more. And if you are not enjoying good result, then in that particular scenario, you have to do this karma to enjoy the result. For a particular example, profession is going bad, say, for someone. The 10th Lord is situated in Taurus, Navansh. Now the Lord of this Taurus, Navansh is Venus. Now see where Venus is situated. In. This Venus is situated in Virgo, Navansh. Now you go to his D1 chart. This is Gemini Ascendant native. So Virgo is the fourth house. So he may be having problem in his profession and this problem will be shorted out when he will start visiting the temple, the most prominent temple, the biggest temple around his birthplace. Right? The most prominent temple around the birthplace when the person visits that particular temple, the problem related to profession will vanish. This is one of my secret tool in giving remedies with respect to karma. I always say one thing to all my students that doing a remedy based on karma is, sorry, doing a remedy based on Navamsha is very difficult. But if you crack the remedy from Navamsha, you need no other remedy at all. This is one singular remedy that you need in your life that will change your life completely, 100%. So this is what is to be understood with respect to Navamsha. And let me share a bonus technique also. So in Vedic Astrology, Nakshatras are given much importance 
better than what you can do with nakshatra the best use is there in vedic astrology navamsh one navamsh is one nakshatra pada every nakshatra have four padas so one rashi have nine nakshatra padas two nakshatras in total and one pada of the third nakshatra is the basic setup for aries leo and sagittarius so navamsha is nakshatra pada navamsha is based on nakshatra pada so when you see navamsha you are not only looking at nakshatras you are giving, going even deeper in nakshatra dividing every nakshatra into four parts and looking at it there now see there is one particular point yato naam tato guna is a thing that we follow while decoding sanskrit we do this yato naam tato guna the quality is according to the name why there is a particular rashi why one is born in a particular rashi a simple answer to that is because of the quality of karma because of the setup that is possible only in this ascendant a setup which reflects the karma of the native in a in its purest sense nakshatra can be broken into many ways one popular will be naksh nakshatra something which cannot be destroyed na chati chati is destruction something which cannot be destroyed is nakshatra now the karma of the lord of the nakshatra is essential to go through because this is this is the karma this is the result that cannot be avoided for a particular example if the seventh lord goes into the navamsha of sun the karma is related to sun and sun is going against family for this result going against family is the karma of sun right you can take multiple significations of the planet it is not like sun indicates one standard karma all of the significations of sun are somehow connected to the karma only challenging the authority right compromising your ego all of that is sun karma that is to be done if the seventh lord goes into the navamsha of sun if the seventh lord goes into the navamsha of moon then taking care of your spouse as a parent taking care of your spouse by being a person that you never thought you will become ever in your life is the karma if the seventh lord goes into the kar- into the navamsha of mars then taking initiative for your spouse doing things for your spouse going out of your mental physical social emotional capability is the karma if the seventh lord goes into the navamsha of mercury then learning new things for spouse implementing it for your marriage for your spouse for your relationship is the karma that you will have to go through when the seventh lord is in the karma in the nakshat navamsha of jupiter in that particular scenario keeping aside those things that you think you cannot live without those things that you think you know these things are more important to me than my spouse than my marriage i cannot live without these things living without those things sacrificing those things sacrificing the most loved possession or thing of your is the sacrifice that your marriage is going to take is the is that the relationship will take from you and until and unless you do this sacrifice there is no success no happiness this is the karma that you have to go through either you go through it today either you go through it tomorrow you go through it happily you go through it crying this is not an issue the life story in this life because you have this horoscopic setup includes this karma right there is no two thought about it when the seventh lord goes into the karma of sorry when the seventh lord goes into the navamsha of venus the karma is the loss loss of attachment there are many things that you are very much attached of there can be things that you are very much attached of and to break this attachment you know being cruel for the spouse for the betterment of spouse being insensitive for the relationship is the karma of venus and the karma of saturn is keeping a spouse above yourself be littling yourself losing yourself for the spouse to win is the karma for saturn that you cannot avoid and as i have told you this is just one simple result that i have told you all the significations of saturn signify the karma of saturn so you say saturn also indicates physical pain 
So if the seventh lord goes into the navamsha of Saturn, then enduring physical pain, going through physical pain, it also a karma for marriage that you will have to go through. Generally, those people who have there, and this is not only when the seventh lord goes into the navamsha of Saturn; it is also when the seventh lord sits with Saturn in navamsha. After marriage, the karma will be health issue that you will have to go through. This karma will come. This is a non-destructible karma. You will try to find remedies, but remedy will come also, but after the suffering, not before the suffering. This is a place where you can do the remedy, but some suffering will still be there. You will have to go through the major karma. Only then the remedy will come. Otherwise, it will not come. This is one more secret of Navamsha. And all of these secrets that I have told you, I have just... Elaborated it, explained it with respect to the seventh lord, but this should be applied with respect to every house lord for every matter of life. And when you do this, the result that you will find will be very miraculous and will uplift your level of astrology and prediction. That is what I want wholeheartedly. Right. So thank you for watching this video. Namaskar.